Hi students, Professor Nugent here. In this video, we're going to discuss log transformation. Now, why do we take the log transformation? The first reason that we may take the log transformation of a variable is so that we can interpret the estimated coefficient as a semi-elasticity in the case that either the x or the y is in the log transformation, or as the elasticity in the case that both x and y have been log transformed. The second reason is to reflect a nonlinear relationship between x and y. Third, taking the log transformation will narrow the range or can narrow the amount of heteroskedasticity demonstrated in the data. And fourth, we can get a better approximation of the normal distribution. Uh, we can reduce skew by taking the log transformation. We have some rules of thumb that may help us determine when to take the log um, if we're not sure as to what's going on, uh, whether we want to take the log based on, on these criteria, we, we have these rules of thumb to rely on. So we take the log when our variable is measured in a positive dollar amount or the variable takes large integer values. Large integer values may be population, number of employees, school enrollment, etc. We do not take the log when the variable is measured in years. Variables measured in years are like tenure on the job, number of years of education, and in that case, it is intuitive to measure what is the effect of X on Y for an additional year of education, for example. Number two, we're not going to take the log when the variable takes the value zero or takes negative values. Um, in that case, we the log of zero or the log of a negative value is undefined. Um, and so we would lose that observation. We do have an alternative, and that is to instead use the inverse hyperbolic sign, IHS. And the inverse hyperbolic sign is a log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Um, so uh, the inverse hyperbolic sign um, demonstrates many of the same properties of, of the log transformation um, and would be used for many of these same reasons. Finally, for variables measured in proportion or percent, it depends on the case. These variables already have a percentage point interpretation for their coefficients. Um, so we have that criteria basically satisfied. Um, so if there's some kind of nonlinear relationship or some heteroscedasticity, you may want to take the log. For example, if you're looking at something like an exchange rate, which fluctuates a lot. You know, it's going up and down like this. Uh, you may want to take the log. Um, but otherwise, variables measured in proportion or percent are typically left in their original form. So we have um, approximations for the different cases that allow us to interpret the effect of x on y rather than log y. And we can put down these approximations in a table. So let's think about the coefficient interpretation with logs. Coefficient interpretation. So we're going to look at four different cases for x log of x for y and log of y. For the case of x and y both in their original form, change of y is given by beta 1 change in x. For the case of log of y but x in its original form, the percent change in y is given by 100 times beta 1 change in x. For 
x in log, but y not, the change in y is given by beta 1 over 100 times percent change in x. And finally, for the log log model, the percent change in y is equal to beta 1 percent change in x. Now, these interpretations are just approximations, and they work well when the change in x is small. But they stop working so well when the change in x becomes larger. So we can get better coefficient interpretations than this. We can do better than this. x log x better coefficient interpretation for both variables still in their original form, this is still change in y equal to beta 1, change in x. For x in its original form and log of y, so y is log transform, percent change in y is equal to 100 times e to the power of beta 1 times the change in x minus 1. For log of x and y in its original form, change in y is equal to beta 1 times the log of 100 plus p over 100, where p is the percent change in x. And for the log log model, percent change in y is equal to e to the power of beta 1 times log of 100 plus p over 100, again, where p is the percent change in x. So these are better coefficient interpretations, especially in the case where the change in x is larger. If we're thinking about a one unit change in x or a 1% change in x, then the interpretations in the previous table, those will do just fine. But if we're thinking about a 10% change in x or a 10 unit change in x, if we're starting to think about the effect of x on y for larger changes in x, then we need to refer to these interpretations. All right, so some additional notes on using logs. And we can't compare the r squared between a model that has a log transform dependent variable and a dependent variable in its original form. All right, so that's that's important to keep in mind if you're trying to think about model selection and you have log of y and y equals x beta naught plus beta 1, so on and so forth, beta naught plus beta 1, x 1, so on and so forth cannot compare the r squared from these two regressions because you're explaining variation in a different variable. More on that um, in a later video. And again, um, something else that is complicated with log transform is that the predicted value of y is not equal to the exponent e to the power of log of y hat. All right, so we can't just take e to the power of log y to get y. 
um, the predicted value of y. And again, in a later video, we're going to um, discuss how we can actually get y hat from this. All right, so that's it for log transform. Stay tuned to the next video, and we'll discuss polynomials, another way to describe nonlinear relationships amongst your regression equations.